So welcome to this practice. We're going to be focusing today on balancing the vata dosha and the kapha dosha. As a result, your pitta dosha is also going to come into balance. But you'll hear me discuss some of the ways that vata and kapha have to work more harmoniously together. The practice will also include a lymph cleansing aspect to it, because if we don't cleanse the lymph system, it's hard to bring these doshas back into balance. We will also use a pranayama where we're balancing the inhale with the exhale. That's called sama pranayama. And balancing the breath is something that you can do to wisely chaperone yourself back into balance too. Okay, let's go to class now. Good morning. Welcome for practice on spring equinox. We have a little fuzzy family here. There's a teeny tail of a fuzzy right there. They're playing at the door. So they may or may not come in because they're they're playing with each other through the crack of the door. <laughs> this one is apparently not involved and not really supervising either. Okay, let's take a comfortable seat to get started. You can rest your hands in your lap. Again, you'll need a sandbag, a yoga strap and two blocks for class today. You're welcome to close your eyes and let yourself come into your seat and your intention for practice. Allow your breathing to help you come into the present moment. So the breath is directed down into the pelvic basin and will include the mid torso. This is a resting breath. So we're not thinking how much breath can I get to come up into the chest or the heart? So the inhale drops down like the roots in the soil. This time of year, we know that they've been doing their thing because we can see the spring is blooming. Let the breath drop down to the root system of your body. You might notice during the exhale, a gentle uh, continuous sense of then toning, toning the lower abdomen during the exhale and then gently releasing that into the inhale. So make it an easeful transition between inhale and exhale. If you simply observe the resting breath when you're in your state of homeostasis, you will see that gentle transition between the movements of the breath. When that's not happening, you can either practice witnessing and lovingly inviting, allowing that to occur, and watch it come into form, or you can gently participate in bringing that state on. And that gentle participation is inhale down into the pelvic basin, exhale from the pelvic basin, and watch the gentleness and the consistency that you can create without any attitude of coercion, much more an attitude of collaboration. And when you feel the breath has become established and it's smooth, then begin expanding it. So you can sense inhale to the low pelvis, inhale to the mid torso, inhale up to the heart. The top of the in-breath lifts the collarbones so they float the top of the inhalation. And then the exhale also moving from the base of the pelvis and going upwards along the front of the spine. And when you have a sense of that kind of breath, I'm gonna ask you to imagine that the inhale is your intention rising through your body. So sometimes in life, we have to dig deep to reconnect to our intention. And that intention might be to live according to your values or to have integrity in your actions or 
to improve your self-care, to be courageous in your conversations or in a relationship, or to have the intention to finally take on a task or a chore that you've been postponing, see yourself bringing that to completion. But let's imagine that rising during the inhalation. And then on the exhale, a sense that you're drawing in the strength needed to follow through on that intention. There's having the intention or the seed, the seed of the idea, the seed of the motivation. And then there's also having the strength or the, the energy, the vitality to then do that intention. You're gifting yourself with the likelihood of actually following through on your intention. And now please raise your hands to your heart. Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Punaktu Savidyang Aravavai Tejasvina Vahita Mastu Mavid Veshavai Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana your hands as you're ready to and please open your eyes I'm drinking hot water so thanks for your patience so in class today I've had a request to work on something that would help to reduce vata dosha, the vata dosha of the mind, and yet deepen the sense of the kapha dosha, which is essentially the spring season. So this is a wonderful request because what we do to reduce vata in the mind also increases kapha dosha's sense of stability or grounding. We can also say it as what we do to increase the sense of kapha dosha and that sense of grounding and stability will reduce the vata dosha. So they, they work in harmony with each other when they're working well together. When vata is in excess, it tends to diminish our access to kapha dosha. When kapha dosha is in excess, it tends to diminish our access to vata dosha. 
in between there is this pitta dosha, which can sometimes cause mayhem and may actually be the thing that's moving vata dosha out of balance and moving kapha dosha out of balance also. When vata is out of balance, it's like a windy ceiling fan. When kapha dosha is out of balance, it can either be like the sense of being stuck in the mud or it can become this kind of overall depletion like the, the basic prana, your um, essential chi is not there anymore. You've lost contact with that. In that state, people often reach for things that are self-medicating, like caffeine and or sugar to stimulate some form of energy in the body. Unfortunately, both caffeine and sugar can move vata dosha further up and out, and they also dysregulate kapha dosha. It's a temporary momentary solution for energy that has a longer term impact for the negative. So what we're gonna do is a practice that moves the vata dosha back into the body and also helps kapha dosha to do its job for us, to give it its place, for it to know that we value kapha dosha too. So please come up to standing. When you come to stand, we're gonna start with a simple practice for the lymph system. So make two fists like this, and then taking this the side of the phenar eminence right here between the thumb and the wrist, we're gonna to go to the upper right collarbone about 20 times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other side. Other side. Once more. Now from the sternum over to the shoulder. So you're getting the lymph system woken up here and that is very important for the kapha dosha to resume taking care of you. Other side. Your body has so many to internal technologies for healing and harmony and balance. Now take the right arm. The limb system is just one of those systems. We're going from the wrist to the shoulder here. Other side. Okay, pause and assess. So you've had some changes. We've addressed one really primary place for the limb system. We've surrounded another primary place. We're gonna address it right now. But just notice the influence of that much. Okay, now take the right arm out to the side, make a little cup with the left hand, and we're gonna do the armpit. So it's in this region here. So you can go under the tricep and into the armpit. Other side, so make a cup with the right hand. Okay, and now with your, check that you've got the space for it, standing forward on your mat if you need to, swing the arms. So as you swing, you're also gonna be addressing the limb system. When you go forward, I'd like you to spread the fingers open. When you go back, make two fists. We're also gonna add a brisk breathing to this. So it's inhale forward, exhale back. Five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, reach up. And exhale, float the arms down and let your arms relax down at the sides of your torso. And you might feel like a little bit lightheaded or effervescent or energized.
Okay, so while the limb system is moving, let's now bring the fingers up behind the ears. Just about 10 small circles where the neck meets the earlobe. And go to the hinge of the jaw. Okay, now the place where the cheekbones meet the nose. Right in here, I just use two fingers. And then where the eyebrows meet the bridge of the nose. So I cross my fingers, put my thumbs, and then I like to move my head to get that spot because holding the thumbs still and moving the head is easier. Okay, and then having cleared those places, you go like this, take your left hand and stroke down the right side of the neck, down towards the collarbone, over towards the armpit, under the chin, to the neck, collarbone, armpit, across the lower jaw, neck, armpit, bridge of the nose, cheek, neck, armpit, and the forehead to your temple, to the ear, to the collarbone, to the armpit. Now notice the two hemispheres of the face. We gotta do the other side. So bring the left hand over. So we start behind the ear on the side of the neck and then add under the chin over and down. across the lower jaw to the ear and down. And then from the bridge of the nose to the ear and down. And then from the forehead to the temple and down. Okay. Now, just a couple more things for the limb system so we can get this system moving. It becomes stagnant and it also can become stagnant by doing things like excess caffeine and sugar or the kinds of foods then after caffeine or things that overstimulate you. When vata is high, people also tend to then sedate with things that cause heaviness. And Cappadocia has the quality of heavy, but we don't want to succumb to that heaviness. And that heaviness can become the stagnation of the limb system. And then you don't have your vitality because your system is backed up and you wake up in the morning feeling groggy and you reach again for caffeine and sugar, which gives you this false energy that can then move your vata dosha to feel like, okay, I've got things to do. And yet you're leaving home to go do those things. I mean, leaving home. So in this region of the limb system, we're gonna take two fists and coming down through the solar plexus, towards the pubic bone. And then go to the sides of the abdomen. And then the side waist. Now the groin. And now the back of the calves where they meet the knees. Okay, and then come up to standing and find a place that could be your countertop, your desktop, the wall, the height of the wall is fine if you put your hands up at shoulder height on the wall that's also suited. You can see that I have some things in the way of my wall. So place your hands on the wall at shoulder height or on the desktop or on the kitchen counter. And step back to an L position. And as you're stepping back now, you've awakened the limb system. So start breathing more deeply down into the lower belly. Breathe into the pelvis, the pelvic basin.
and connect to the parts of you that deeply know how to nurture you, how to help you be grounded and stable. Connect to the parts of you that know how to organize your stamina. These parts also know how to be loving, considerate, how to chaperone your energy, including output and renewal. So both service and resting activity and refuge. Allow the breath to be a little longer, a little bit smoother. Inhale, lift your chest and head, look towards your hands. Step your right foot forward and come into a calf stretch on the left side. With that calf stretch, press down through your left heel, lift the pubic bone up, lift the hip bones up. So your left leg, you may sense your calf and your hip flexors. And then inhale, raise the arms up. Interlace your fingers, press the heels of the hands straight up. Lift the rib cage like a hot air balloon. Root down into your tailbone, your left heel, your toes, but rise up on the front of the thigh, the low belly. Lift into your heart and begin to bloom in the upper back a little bit like a flower. You could think of this time of year, the crocuses have come up, the daffodils have come and gone, the Daphne is blooming, and something else is on the horizon. And then exhale, press the arms out to the sides of your room. Place your hands on the blocks, the desk, the kitchen counter, or the wall and step back to your L position. And allow the breath to return you to that in you which knows how to re renew, how to take refuge, how to be grounded, stable, more centered, not more dissipated. And then pressing against the wall or the desk or the kitchen counter, step your left foot forward. Press the right heel firmly down, stretch the right calf muscle. Lift your hip bones up. So the pubic bone is also rising. And then inhale, sweep the arms wide. As you're coming up, interlace your fingers, change the interlace of the hand so it, it has that awkward feeling, it's the other. It's the other interlace. And as you're breathing in, breathing out, connect both to that which is grounding about this position and that which is motivating. So lift your heart, make a little bit of a back bend in the thoracic spine. You may choose to look up a little bit also for inspiration. It will challenge your balance, but it's a good chance to practice your balance. And then exhale, press your arms out wide. And one more time, place your hands <clears throat> on the wall, on the kitchen counter, on your desk with your blocks or on your blocks on your little prop shelf as I'm doing. And allow the breath to go deeply into the pelvis. So again, nurture the parts of you that know how to nurture you.
And then inhale, step up, walk towards your blocks or the wall and rise up to standing. So you're gonna let the arms drop down. So you're up right now. And yet you may sense that your energy is able to encompass the whole body. So as you let the arms dangle, close your eyes. Take a wide stance. And hinge forward at the top of the thighs. Come on down, touch the floor with your fingertips. Release the weight of your head. In fact, reach through the crown of your skull towards the earth. Energize your legs. And specifically, as you energize the legs, you're energizing kapha dosha. So this, this sense of stability and strength and stamina. As you release the torso down, relax the weight of your head. You're releasing the adverse influences of the vata dosha. You're releasing excess or circular thinking, mental anxiety, rumination, release a sense of flitting about or the Susceptibility to distractions. And increase the sense of being grounded and stable, cultivating stamina. Raise your hands to your hips. Please rise up to standing. And as you come up, let's go heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe. Come to mountain pose. And then you probably sense that you're encompassing a little bit more of the lower hemisphere of the body, right? Just as a result of that position. So notice how you gently moved prana. You've moved energy in the body. Now when we're struggling with anxiety or that vata dosha that keeps making the same choices again and again, looking for energy or sometimes looking for connection in the form of distraction. So we, ironically, we look for connection, but it's a disconnection from ourselves. So when that's occurring, there's another key pose that we can do. And that's where I'd like you to have uh, blankets and blocks for this morning. So we're going to take each blanket and fold it in the storage fold. So when Kappa Dosha has a chance to flourish, we experience stamina, vitality, energy, capacity. Um, we don't experience feeling ungrounded. You know, it's not like, oh, a big party is going to happen. It's a sense that yeah, I've got the resources, I've got the reserves. I I don't feel I'm going to get depleted. I'm not going to get exhausted partway to the task. We, we feel that the resources are within us. When vata and pitta are in excess, it tends to disrupt the Cappadocia. So I'd like you to put one block is going to go close into the knees. One block, you're not quite sure where to put it until you get set up. So we put these two blankets on the first block. That's going to come in pretty close. So that's going to be against the abdomen. The second block, then you're going to pick up your blankets, place your block. And you need a space between the two blocks because that's where the hands are going to go. So we come down where the abdomen is supported. And then you can cross your arms underneath. So the arms go through here. It feels like you're giving yourself a hug. The back of the body should feel broad. You can turn your head to one side or the other. And notice what it's like now to let the breath and the resources kind of fill up this reservoir. Let's think of it as a reservoir of vitality.
Once you've made contact with the lower belly and the pelvis, you feel like the breath is able to be there. I'm going to ask you to balance your inhale with your exhale. You can use the ujjayi breath. Don't look for the longest, most grasping form of the inhale, but rather an even cadence. So connect with the parts of you that know how to provide rhythm and nourishment and grounding. And see if you might be able to have five breath cycles consistently. So if the inhale is eight, exhale is eight, can you do that for five consistent breath cycles? And that would be a sign both that your mind is able to concentrate and that you're working at a rhythm that reflects your sustainable rhythm, your homeostasis. Notice if you've wisely chosen a sustainable rhythm. Acknowledge that you're working on nourishing your kapha dosha right now. At the end of your fifth exhale, hopefully those were consistent breath cycles. And you can place your hands on the floor and walk yourself up to kneeling. Now let's keep the two blankets, put the two blocks aside. I hope your knees have the padding that you prefer them to have. I'll put the two blankets at the ready. And what we're gonna do is put the knees out wide and come down to a kind of um, frog pose. This is tadpole pose right now. Tadpole because the big toes are still touching. Then bring the torso forward, let the knees go apart. And as the knees go out to the side, and you're gonna take the feet out so that the feet, without knocking over your tea mug, the feet point out to the sides of the room. And ideally, the blankets allow you to have support for the lower abdomen. And in my case, as I come into this position, my blankets aren't quite high enough to support my lower belly. So is do we then force the pelvis to go lower? No, we do not. <laughs> we take the blanket and fold it so that the lower belly has contact. And you can feel like the stretch is there. The pelvis is open. The tailbone goes long towards the wall behind you. And yet the abdomen is supported by the blanket so you can feel the breath in the back and the sides of the waist. And every rhythmic breath cycle that you're doing is also telling your lymph system that you want it to turn back on. You want it to be like the, the cleansing 
creatures of the ocean. You want the lymph system to be filtering properly. You want yourself to breathe in, breathe out, supporting that rhythm for the organs in the abdomen, as well as the lymph system. Now let's bring the big toes together. And using the hands, you can walk back. So this child's pose, you're gonna find that the knees are quite a bit farther apart. If possible, you can bring your hips to your heels. Come down to rest. Probably your chest is gonna be on the blankets. And if they don't, if your chest doesn't touch, make the blankets taller. Make sure your head is also supported. Actively reach your hips back towards your heel. So this is not a passive child's pose. It's an active form of child's pose. And then place your hands underneath your shoulders Press yourself up to kneeling. Go ahead and bring the big toes apart and the knees together. So you have the big toes in, now they can go straight on. So they're pointing straight behind you. You can sort of see my feet there. Okay, now take two blocks. So we're gonna come into a version of Cobra and upward dog pose using the two blankets. So place your two blocks, bring the lower pelvis onto the first edge of the blanket. Place your hands on your blocks. Since the floor is quite a bit lower down, we're putting the blocks in place. Notice that you can breathe into the lower belly and the lower pelvis pretty well, and also the back and the sides of the waist here. Energize your legs. Root the tailbone. Inhale, start to raise your heart into cobra pose, really not relying on the arms or the blocks at all at this point. So you're gonna raise your heart by the strength of the upper back and the shoulders. Keep the legs grounded. So just to show you, the hands are not having any responsibility yet. They're just resting there. Energize the legs, the pelvis, the lower belly, the heart, the upper back and the shoulders. Notice the rhythmic nature of the breath. So your torso will likely have a little bit of rising and descending. Make a little rhythm like a wave in the ocean. And then press into your hands, roll the shoulders back and slowly rise up to upward dog pose. So the legs become straight, they came off the floor. The arms become straight, bring your chest and heart forward. And then exhale, use your upper body strength to come back down to a toned experience of cobra pose. As you come down, release the actions of the hands, but keep them in place. Breathe in exhale, tone the legs, lengthen your tailbone, slide the shoulders back. Inhale, rise up. Remember that earlier in class where I said the strength to make the action, not just the idea of the intention, but the strength to follow through. And then exhale, come down slowly. Press into both hands now, 
and your knees and your shins come up to table pose and reach back to child's pose. Let's keep the hands out in front, make the arms strong, balance the weight of your head between or slightly above your upper arms. Notice the breath now making contact with your thighs, with the side torso, with the back waist. Okay, and then walk your hands back towards your knees, come up to kneeling. Hello, yes, hi, hi. Did you come with news? Do you have kitten gossip for me? Yeah, is anybody in trouble? <laughs> Did they knock something over? I don't know, I didn't hear it. You can show me after class, okay. Okay, now we're gonna sit in front of these two blankets. Bring your blocks around. <laughs> Maybe Nakula is just on time for this position. When you lay back now, place the two blocks outside of the yoga mat so that your knees can rest on them. Reach for your sandbag, which usually has a handle. I got my handle on the wrong side. Okay, and then place the sandbag low on the pelvic bone down below. So it's not impeding on your ability to breathe in the lower belly. As you lie back, if your head feels comfortably supported by the blankets, then you can just go as it is, just like this. But for some people, the upper back is not very limber or the neck feels like it needs more support. In that case, you take the top blanket and you're gonna curl it under the neck. So it fits to the round shape of the neck. In addition, for those of us where anxiety might have been high or your vata dosha is moving around a lot, it's calling you away from home, actually elevating the head so your gaze is more down towards the heart. That is going to incline your body toward deeper rest back into the kapha dosha versus having the head flat where then the throat is more open and there's a bit of energy getting dissipated up in that direction. So those are different reasons to make different choices in this position. Take the arms out to the side. Close your eyes. Notice the kapha dosha helping you to return back into the pelvic basin here. Connect inside with the parts of you that know how to nourish, how to be grounded. And that in you which knows how to create stability. And know that in the process of nourishing those qualities in yourself, you're going to be reducing, automatically reducing the habits of self medicating, medicating the pain of being disconnected from yourself, the, the pain of feeling depleted. So that will reduce and you'll feel even more able to nourish your stamina, your vitality. you rest, welcome yourself to be taken care of by your body's intelligence, all the systems that you just awakened. Picture those coming into harmony without any interference from you.
Allow your mind to slow down for the rhythm of your body to be more connected to the rhythm of the earth, the gentle rhythms of nature.
nervous systems that nourish your vitality. They're doing their housekeeping chores right now. And they're just finishing up in a few moments. You're going to have clear windows, a clean floor, and fresh air coming through. And as those systems begin to work more optimally, so too your doshas will come into balance. And so too then your mind wisdom of your choices. So that's thoughts, actions, behaviors, all those things. And this, now we're going to wiggle the fingers and the toes and release the sandbag. <laughs> I have two sandbags now. I know, honey. It's time. So... <laughs> We're going to be coming up to sit in meditation for pranayama and meditation. Let me see what happens here with my little bundle. Okay. Are you ready? Okay, let's find a meditation seat. I know you wanted a lap earlier. You have a whole torso. All right, let's see here how it goes. It's nice for me too, actually, that he wants to cuddle. Okay, here we go. Let's see how that goes, all right? Is that going to be okay? Okay, so come into your meditation seat, hopefully as grounded as you can. So whatever support you need for your hips and pelvis, of course, you provide that. But then see if you can also sit closer to the ground. <laughs> okay, why don't you find your place, Nicola? Yeah, okay. Rest your hands in your lap and bring the tip of the tongue behind the upper two teeth. Let's open the back hollow of the throat. That's for the ujjayi breath. And so as you come into your seat, begin a very subtle form of ujjayi breathing. sense that your breath is naturally longer, more easily balanced. Let's do five breaths consistently where the inhale matches the exhale. beginning of each inhale, imagine that you've taken a bucket down into a deep well. Really clear spring water is there and you're bringing that motivation, that vitality upwards to manifest in your heart, your speech, your vision for the day. And during each exhale, you're returning to the inner strength that supports that manifestation. So we're not flimsy or wobbly about it.
releasing the ujjayi breath, bring your right hand up for Nadi Shodhana. We don't use the ujjayi technique during Nadi Shodhana, but you may find that the closure of one nostril at a time allows you to have the inhale and exhale be about the same pace as you were just working. It may be slightly longer. Nadi Shodhana is inhale left, exhale right, and inhale right nostril, and exhale left nostril for one round. Let's do four rounds in total. the inhale to be equal to the exhale. to do, which is two breath cycles. through the left nostril, then rest your right hand back in your lap. And relax all effort and see if you can sense the balance of your doshas, including pitta doshas, also balanced by this practice. We want the ground 
grounding or the stability of the kapha dosha. And the strength that comes from a balanced kapha dosha. We want a sense of motivation and just enough appropriate drive from the pitta dosha. And a clear and tranquil mind for making wise choices from the vata dosha. of these doshas and the inner quiet of the mind. raise your hands to your heart. When our doshas are balanced, we have access to the grounding, nourishing qualities of kapha dosha. We are more connected to the earth and the water. We have the motivation and the appropriate amount of drive from the pitta dosha, comprised of water and fire. And we have the quality of lucidity or clarity of mind 
from the vata dosha, air and ether dosha. And therefore we make a positive influence in our own life and the lives around us. We are less susceptible to the hijackings of the doshas out of balance. And thank you for sharing your practice. Namaste. Thank you for sharing your practice with us today. I hope your doshas feel balanced and that you're not susceptible to the ways in which your doshas will tend to pull you out of balance. Vata dosha tends to pull you up and out. And in that place of distraction and disconnection, it's hard to benefit from the resource of the kapha dosha. Kapha dosha would be the most generative, the most creative, the most unctuous. It has this quality of aliveness and stamina and resilience. But when we go up to vata dosha, we can become more fragile, less resilient, less grounded. Pitta dosha tends to pull us into drive and moving things forward. It also tends to pull us into reaching for things like foraging for food or other distractions or things that would complete us, even though we can't be completed by those temporary things. Kapadosha also suffers from that because as we pack it in, let's say too much food or too much alcohol or too much doing out in the world, too much consuming, then our Kapadosha, hi Nakula, our Kapadosha is going to be burdened by that. How can the lymph system and the digestive system together keep up with all of that? And they can't really keep up with it. <laughs> Bye Nakula. <laughs> So when the doshas are going out of balance, we end up having a life where we have to kind of keep up with the mayhem that we're causing. And that is fundamentally exhausting and depleting. When our doshas are in balance, we make better choices. We have less cleanup to do. The housekeeping chores are being done by the inner intelligence of the body. And we're allowing for that to happen on the natural wisdom of the body. So ideally, you have a sense of that, a taste of that today from this practice. Okay. Thanks again for being here. Please don't forget to hit the like button or subscribe to the channel while you're here and leave me questions or comments down below the video also. Thanks so much.